In this video, I want to show you 8 common causes of chronic inflammation. Since you have already clicked on this video, I probably don't need to tell you why inflammation is bad. Inflammation is at the root of almost all modern diseases, including heart diseases, Alzheimer's, depression, cancer and many more. So let's jump right into the first cause, an unhealthy gut. What most people don't know is that about 70% of the immune system is associated with the gut. Gut microbes can produce molecules that communicate with our immune system. A good example is the short-chain fatty acid butyrate, which is produced when fibers fermented in the colon. Butyrate stimulates the production of regulatory T-cells, which help to dampen any unnecessary inflammation. Another important factor is the permeability of our gut cell wall. An increase in gut permeability, aka leaky gut, can cause inflammatory molecules to get into contact with our immune cells where they then cause inflammation. One of these inflammatory molecules is called lipopolysaccharide, or short LPS, and many studies found that it causes all kinds of diseases, ranging from heart diseases over diabetes to Alzheimer's. A recent study found that healthy centenarians had significantly lower blood LPS levels compared to unhealthy young adults, so keeping your gut cell wall tight might be a worthwhile attempt to longevity. The microbiome is complex and we are far from understanding it, but there is some evidence that a diet that includes fiber and probiotic bacteria and excludes processed foods can protect against leaky gut. This brings me to the next cause of chronic inflammation, processed foods. Food processing removes the healthy parts of the food, such as fiber and vitamins, and adds harmful chemicals that can induce inflammation. Researchers found that common food additives cause inflammation in the gut by affecting the gut microbiome. Carrying around some extra pounds and being physically inactive can also drive inflammation. During the last decade, researchers found that fat tissue secretes inflammatory molecules. And a study followed people for over 7 years and found that when the weight increased, so did markers for inflammation. However, losing weight will reduce inflammation. As much as we all love it, sugar can also cause inflammation. Sugar consists to 50% of glucose and 50% of fructose molecules, and the fructose is a troublemaker here. Fructose is mainly metabolized in the liver, where it induces de novo lipogenesis, uric acid production, and stimulates inflammation. A study found that when people consume 1 liter of sucrose sweetened soft drink daily, it increased uric acid concentrations by 15% and uric acid is a potent stimulator of inflammation. Please note that diet cola only showed a small increase, while milk and water reduced uric acid concentrations. There is also some evidence that foods high in processed carbohydrates are inflammatory in general. For one study, people were divided into a low-carb diet group with 12% carbs and 59% fat, or a low-fat diet group with 56% carbs and 24% fat. The low-carb diet group showed a significant reduction in a variety of markers for inflammation, unlike the low-fat diet group. Vegetable oils might also be a cause of inflammation. The intake of vegetable oils has increased manifold over the last years. Vegetable oils are high in polyunsaturated fatty acids, which makes them susceptible to oxidation when heated. And oxidation leads to the production of aldehydes, which is toxic for our cells. Aldehydes are also the reason why you feel crappy after drinking. Anyways, researchers found that oils like corn oil or sunflower oil create up to four times the amount of aldehydes when heated compared to coconut oil or butter. Vegetable oils are also high in omega-6 fatty acids, which mostly lead to the production of pro-inflammatory molecules. However, we need some levels of omega-6 in our diet, and studies found that as long as the omega-6 intake isn't too high and the omega-3 intake is adequate, it won't cause inflammation. Now having said this, the modern omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is out of rack, with people consuming far too much omega-6 fatty acids. Chronic stress leads to many diseases, and this is most likely because stress causes inflammation. The confusing thing here is that cortisol, the major stress hormone, is one of the most powerful immunosuppressant molecules we know. So how does it come that chronically high cortisol levels cause inflammation? Well, by a similar way as high insulin causes insulin resistance. A research team from the United States found that people with chronic high stress levels develop stress resistance, which in turn causes inflammation. Certain nutrient deficiencies like vitamin D, magnesium or zinc, to just name a few, can also cause inflammation. 
The study compared people with low versus high levels of magnesium and found that the people with low levels had a 50% higher risk of having high levels of inflammation. Okay, these are the most common causes of inflammation. I could only touch on each topic shortly in this video, but if it gets more than 100 likes, I will make a more detailed video on each point. Also, there are other causes of chronic inflammation, such as undetected allergies and persistent infections. But for most people, these 8 factors are main contributors to chronic inflammation. Here's another video that shows how to reduce inflammation naturally. And another one that includes a list of anti-inflammatory foods. Thank you for watching and see you next time.